Welcome. This podcast is re-released from my Anchor podcast, which is distributed on Spotify. You can use the links below to find out more information. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy this episode. Greetings, podcast listeners. In this episode, I'll be speaking about the importance of having an LGBTQ inclusive curriculum in education and an inclusive and diverse working environment. In some classrooms, especially in progressive countries or states, you might find a rainbow flag as a reference to the LGBTQ plus community, to some extent showing support and inclusion, or a poster which challenges homophobic bullying. However, in many countries around the world, the LGBT community is a topic rarely discussed. The absence of references to LGBT identities in our classrooms and curriculums mean that the majority of LGBTQ learners will attend schools where there are few, if any, positive representations of who they are, which can lead to LGBT students and families feeling excluded, which consequently impacts their well-being and achievements. It's important to note that some schools do raise the topic of LGBT community, but often it serves as a topic for debate. Teachers and other students may not know it, but they are debating whether other people in the classroom should be allowed to marry freely, adopt children, receive health care, or even if they have the right to live, with some people from religious backgrounds, such as hardline Christians, believing that homosexuality is a sin and God made everyone perfect, so they should not change their bodies and or gender. But I just want to make it clear, I'm not saying that there should not be a discussion regarding the perspectives of different religions towards the LGBTQ plus community, but the topic should be approached by educators in a respectful manner. Therefore, I believe it is important for all places of education to enhance the learning of all students and teach them to accept each and every one for themselves and their identities. To create an LGBT inclusive curriculum, elements of the LGBT history and their community can be incorporated into most subjects, such as arts, health, literacy, languages, maths, religious and moral education, sciences, social studies, technologies, etc. In coming episodes, I'll be looking into many of these topics and the subjects. LGBT inclusion in the workspace is also important for adults. According to a 2018 Stonewall UK report, 35% of LGBT staff feel unable to be open about their sexuality at work through fear of discrimination. Meanwhile, some who openly identify as LGBTQ+, have been verbally or physically attacked. It is well researched to show that a negative attitude towards people identifying as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, etc. could be impacting the well-being and performance of the company as a whole. As a result, a number of companies are introducing LGBT inclusion workshops, training sessions which attempt to improve understanding amongst all members of the team with the aim of nurturing a welcoming atmosphere. These LGBT inclusion workshops are active training sessions where employees are educated about the do's and don'ts of supporting their colleagues which identify as LGBTQ+, and educating them about possible unconscious bias using correct terminology, titles, and pronouns. These workshops are usually led by an LGBT advocate and equality expert who are able to introduce strategies which can be followed by employees with the aim of improving inclusivity. Often, the advocate and or equality expert identifies as LGBTQ plus themselves, so they are able to share their own experiences and start the learning process, so cisgendered and or straight members of the team are able to learn more significantly. With all the positive effects, these workshops can even lead to an increase in the company's revenue. Research has shown a number of things involving inclusion. Firstly, inclusion increases creativity, innovation and empowerment. With diverse points of view and these diverse teams, they are often better decision makers. Secondly, inclusive companies are 120% more likely to meet their financial targets. This could be because the diversity in creative methods and campaigns promoting their products increase well-being and less stress on LGBT workers. Thirdly, it is found that 67% of job seekers value diversity. So if a company is inclusive and more diverse, both in terms of LGBT workers and workers of different ethnic groups and religions, 
they are more likely to attract workers of a higher level of skill. Thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast. Over the next episodes, I'll be looking into expressive arts, including art and design, dance, drama, and music in the LGBT community. Please subscribe to be notified when new episodes are released.